Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover how to use Traction 6. This is a completely free digital audio workstation. It's capable of recording audio, applying effects, recording or mapping MIDI with a piano roll, and using virtual instruments. Today we'll cover how to get started with the software and walk you through how to make audio recordings. Then we'll move on to working with MIDI and adding our own virtual drums to the program. The first thing we need to do is get Traction 6 installed. Go to Traction's website, which will be linked in the video description below, and download the program. While you're doing this, you'll be asked to create an account. Even though this program is free, they'll link the license to your account, so take note of the email and password so you can activate the program once it's installed. Once the program is downloaded, just install it on your computer. The first time you go to run it, you'll need to enter your email and password, then it will tell you that the program is now activated. After the program is up and running, just click the Create New Project button in the bottom corner and make a new project. Then click the project from the list when it comes up to open it. Now we've got our project opened. As you can see, Traction isn't laid out like most computer programs, so let's take a moment to figure out where everything is. On the left side, we have our Files, Presets, Tracks, Search, Notifications, Markers, and Clipboard menu. I won't be using this to start with and it's in the way, so I'll close it with a little yellow button at the top. At the very top we have our tempo and markers indicator, separated into bars. Both of these can be hidden with their buttons on the top right, but we'll leave them alone. You'll notice that there's no time indicator. Traction 6 can work with both audio and MIDI, but the measure indicator is the best way to lay out a song here when working with both audio and MIDI together. The MIDI tempo locks the project timeline based on the measure, so that will change automatically if you change it in the project. Just be careful if you do this, since it can cause all the audio recordings to go out of sync. In the middle is our main track view. By default we have 8 tracks, but we can add or remove them by right clicking on the left side of the track view. If we click on the arrow within the track, we can set the number of channels that we'll be recording on that track and specify which input from the audio interface it will be using. I'll set this to one input and use the first input on my audio interface. Now we can see that the level indicator for that input shows up. In this case, however, I'll want to set this track as stereo. To do that, we go to the input control at the bottom below all the tracks. This shows up for the track we have selected. There we select Treat as Stereo Channel Pair. There's also a few different options to control the input, but we don't need to worry about those. You'll notice when I did that that the input disappeared from our track. That's because it's changed the type of input, and now we have to reselect it and arm the track again. To arm the track to record, just click the red R button on that track. The R indicator turns red, and that's how we know that the track is now active. Now that our track is armed for recording, all we have to do is press the R button on the keyboard to start recording, and press the spacebar to stop again. Then snap back to the beginning of the project and we can play our track. All the tools to navigate on the track along with the play, pause, and record buttons are in the bottom right corner of the screen. To clean up the track, we'll trim the ends a little and then apply a fade. To trim the clip, use the outermost arrows and drag them to where you want the track to start and end. The inner arrows shorten the clip and drag it in one direction, but instead cut off the other end of the clip where you're dragging. The unfilled box in the middle drags the time of the clip left or right, but the actual audio from the rest of the clip stays in the same place relative to the timeline. The filled box keeps the clip in the same place, but instead drags the internal contents of the clip left or right. Just grabbing the red part at the top of the clip drags the clip along the timeline without changing it. The little L indicator turns on looping for the track. This allows the length of the track to increase and keep repeating. This might not work well for audio tracks, but it's great to create a MIDI loop. Once we've got the track positioned and trimmed how we like it, we can add a fade to the beginning and end. Drag the two diagonal buttons at the beginning and end of the clip towards the center to change the length of the fade. Most of these adjustments can also be made from the audio clip editor at the bottom where we previously had our track options. There's also options there for clip speed and panning, but I prefer to adjust these for the entire track in this case. In the audio clip editor, you'll find more customizable tools for changing speed, pitch, reversing the track, and even adjusting the shape of the fade in or out that we just applied to the clip. After the track is recorded how you like it, we need to make adjustments to the volume, panning, and add different effects like compression and equalization to our mix. 
This is all done to the right of the track. The first control we have is a slider that drags the panning from left to right. Below that, there's a slider that we can drag up and down to adjust the track volume. Now we'll add a new plugin. We'll use Reverb for this example. Click the new plugin generator and drag it down to our track. Then click the Reverb button that we just created to make it active and it will show up in the bottom editor view. Here we'll have all the controls we can adjust for our individual plugin. For example, we can adjust the wet mix and room size as the track is playing to increase the amount of reverb we have. To add more effects, just use the new plugin generator again. We'll drag it before the reverb and apply an equalizer. The order we place these determines the order they are applied to the track. If we change our mind about these effects after, there is a button to delete them in the bottom editor, or we can disable them to see how they affected our sound. Finally, to the right of the plugins we applied, we have a level indicator for that track, as well as the buttons to mute and solo it. Let's take a look at MIDI interaction. We'll drag the Create New Clip icon from the top menu onto our second track, and select Insert New MIDI Clip. Before we can actually hear anything from this, we'll need to add a new MIDI instrument, but there are none supplied with traction. There's a lot of free virtual instruments available online, and I'll be using a free VST drum kit for this video. First we need to go to the settings window and then go to plugins. Click on scanning and sorting, then scan for new VSTs. Tell Traction where the folder is on your computer that you keep all your instrument plugins. Once the folder is selected, just scan for plugins. Then we can go back to our project window. From here, drag a new plugin onto the MIDI track and select the instrument we want to use. We can hear it's configured properly, since clicking on part of the drum kit makes sound in our headphones. Now exit the plugin and double click on the MIDI track that we created. This will bring up the piano roll view. I'm not really a big fan of the piano roll view in traction, but it will work for what we're doing. To hear what each note does, just click on a key on the piano roll. Then just draw notes on the piano roll for each of the drum hits that you want to add. This works the same whether it's for percussion or a synth, but we'll go over percussion since the notes don't match the piano keyboard mapping and it's a little more difficult. Since the piano keyboard isn't the best way to do this, there are other options. The first is to use a MIDI controller. The MIDI controller can be added in the same way as an audio input is added to an audio track. If you're looking to do percussion with traction and you need a MIDI controller, I recommend the Akai MPD-218. This is a standalone USB MIDI controller that has 16 velocity sensitive pads for recording percussive instruments. All you have to do is figure out which pad maps to a particular part of a drum kit, or rearrange them if you like, then use your fingers to drum out a beat. The MPD-218 is just a MIDI input device, so it can be used with any virtual drum instrument and it can be programmed with a lot of different mappings for those plugins. To get one of these for your MIDI recording, check out the link in the video description below. Another way to do this is with pre-made MIDI patterns. Some of these can be downloaded online, but the MT Power Drum Kit 2 has a built-in composer with MIDI grooves. All you do is click on them to see how they sound, then string them together with the composer, and drag that onto your MIDI track to add it to your project. So at this point we've covered how to record and edit both audio and MIDI tracks. After your project is complete, the only thing left to do is export it. Select the export menu in the bottom left and press render to file. These default settings are fine since I usually export as a WAV file. The only thing I like to change is the path and file name. Then just press the render button and you're done. That covers everything you need to get started and make music with Traction. Thanks for watching this video on how to use Traction 6 to record audio and MIDI. If this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. We've also posted our social media links in the video description below so you can check out all our new content as soon as it's released.